Nigeria. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Newsline. I am Jennifer Igwe, standing in for your regular presenter, Becky Madujemu. Now, we thank God that normalcy has returned to an appreciable level in most parts of the nation after the ugly trends that shook many parts of the country following the end SARS protests. Now, the series of events have more than ever made us to appreciate the role of good and hardworking policemen, other security, and traffic personnel. Hmm. Just pause a while and try to imagine how life would be without them. Hmm. You got the same chills, right? Our correspondent sought the views of Nigerians on this. On our lineup also today is an update of the young Nigerian whose life was cut short in a place of worship in Bini, the Edo state capital. Then, what some desire and don't get, a blessing many look forward to, is now giving sleepless nights to a family who have received it in triple dose. Stay tuned as we share the plight of a mother of triplets. We shall also look at what brands are doing, cultural and social events. I'll pause here though for the news and I'll be back afterwards. So let's join Elizabeth Omorui in Abuja. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Jennifer. It's so good to see you. And thanks for joining us on the new segment of the program. Following the recent youth restiveness that led to massive destruction of both public and private property in the southwest region and some states, federal government delegation and southwest governors held a stakeholders engagement at the Lagos House in Ikeja to find a lasting solution to the current disturbance. NOSA also reports that issues bordering on security, good governance and the economy were also deliberated at the meeting. The Chief of Staff to the President assured Nigerians of President Muhammadu Buhari's commitment to the security of lives and property of every Nigerian by engaging stakeholders in all regions to finding lasting solutions to problems confronting the nation. He added that the deliberation of stakeholders as well as their recommendations would be taken directly to Mr. President for onward implementation. Events of the last few weeks have given us all cause to retrace our steps and to ask some very real difficult questions about the state of our country and the future of, of the nation. The chairman of the Southwest Governors Forum, Rotimi Akiridulu, who reiterated the commitment of Southwest Governors to peace and positive engagement of youths in the region, assured Nigerians that the primary objective of the engagement is to fully deliberate among stakeholders on issues raised and finding meaningful solutions going forward. What we do, how do we go about this? How do we fully integrate our youths? How do engage them fully? This stakeholder engagement could not have come at a better time than now when we have serious issues confronting the existence of our people. In the communique issued after the deliberation, part of the recommendations include addressing the threat and reality of insecurity in the country. Now there's hunger in the land and there's also anger. <coughs> and what we look at uh, those two the only way for us to address that and carry our people along is to bridge the trust deficit that currently exists between those of us in government and the ordinary people on the street. They also endorsed the call by traditional rulers for regular consultations with state governors and federal authorities on challenges facing the state and recognition of their roles in the constitution. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. And President Mohamed Buhari has been commended for his speedy approach in handling the issues arising from the NSAS protest and sending a high power delegation from the presidency to hear the voice of the people of the Southeast Zone. Governors and leaders of various groups in the zone made the appreciation while presenting a list of some pressing demands of the people during an interactive session with the presidential delegation led by the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari. Susan Eze reports. 
The meeting, according to the leader of the delegation, Professor Gambari, is vital and necessary for the federal government to hear directly and better understand the feelings of the people on the germane issues raised by the recent NSAS protesters and other national matters. As credible as the issues raised by the Nigerian youths are, the delegation warned on the dangers of fake news and wrong use of the social media. My message will be incomplete if I do not recognize the very strong and patriotic efforts of the Southeastern governors and traditional rulers in ensuring that the fallout of the NSAR protest, which began with a legitimate grounds, will not further out of control in the various states and communities. We must not allow social media to become a platform for this integration. The Southeast governors and representatives of various groups in the zone during the interactive session thanked Mr. President for the various development projects going on in the Southeast zone and met some demands. Key among them were the call for Igbo presidency come 2023 and the need for additional states in the Southeast zone. We have a demand the construction and maintenance of federal roads in the south, yeah. as most of them have done dead traps. We wish our president, the father of our nation, to please look into the demands of these various groups of our people as presented today. Review same with a view to solving them. Members of the delegation, including the Inspector General of Police, had a robust discussion with the governors, ministers, women, youth, religious, and traditional rulers from the Southeast Zone. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. Meanwhile, the fact-finding team inaugurated by the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, in the aftermath of NSI's protest has commenced operations in Lagos. Chairman Committee for Assessment of Losses suffered by the Niger Police, Abu Yaro says the panel will investigate the immediate and remote causes of the violence that engulfed some parts of the country during the NSAS protest. Nosao Sula reports. This panel set up by the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, came on the heels of the two-week-long peaceful NSARS protest, which later degenerated into violence, impunity, loss of lives and properties across the country. The Chairman Committee for Assessment of Losses suffered by the Nigeria Police Force, Abutu Yaru, said the stock-taking mission is to properly document the losses and cost implication of the facilities, weaponry and other assets destroyed during the unrest. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Abubakar Kadamu, in his wisdom and in response to the situation on the ground, decided to set up this committee to assist in collating police material and personnel losses. Abutu also added that the force has commenced recovery of some of the ammunition carted away during the unfortunate incidents. We are equally tasked to use this opportunity to assuage the feeling of our police officers and encourage them to return to work with utmost determination and integrity to keep the security apparatus in firm stand. The committee has three weeks to submit its findings. In Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NTA News. In other news, the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency says the Federal Ministry of Environment is in collaboration with the aviation industry to ensure that adequate facilities are in place in the four airports in the country to contain fire outbreaks and oil spills. The Director General of the agency, Idris Musa, said this when reacting to the OVH tank farm fire incident in Lagos. Kenneth Nanim reports. As such. The briefing by the DG Nozra is coming in the wake of Thursday's OVH tank farm fire incident in Lagos, explaining collaborative efforts by the Ministry of Environment and Aviation towards improving capacity of relevant authorities to adequately contain such emergencies. The DG said specific areas have been secured in four major airports in the country for the purpose. We have revamped that and we have gone to 60 70 percent of it. In setting the record straight on the fire outbreak, the houseman of Nozra explained that the farm has a total of 34 million liters storage capacity for various petroleum products, 
but the particular one gutted by fire is a 10 million liter PMS tank which has about 7 million liters at the time of the incident. He allays fears of further spread or explosion as the fire is being contained through collaborative efforts. What to do is to make sure that the body of the tank is cool. And to that extent, a lot of water was, was uh, deployed, wetting the, the, the size of the tank. Uh, to the glory of God, I think uh, that is uh, being contained. Investigation to ascertain the cause of the inferno, he said, is still ongoing. Kenneth Nanim, NTN News. The Ministry of Transportation is to complete the fencing of the Abuja Kaduna rail line in 2021 for improved security of passengers. The Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, was speaking at the 2021 budget defense session at the National Assembly. Ignatius Nkwo tells us more. Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, in company of the Minister of State for Transportation, Bwemi Sola Saraki, arrives Senate Conference Room for 2021 Budget Defense before National Assembly Committees on Land Transport, Marine and Harbor. 205.1 billion naira is the capital proposal for the ministry. 204 billion for land transport, while 845 million is for the marine sector. The Ministry, in its budget proposal, has presented amounts required for completion of some of the projects by year 2021, while others may span up to 2022. The 2021 budget of the Ministry will pursue federal government's priority projects on achieving intermodal railway transportation network. This includes the construction of a 378-kilometer single-track standard gauge rail between Kano, Katsina, Gibia to Niger Republic. Under our railway modernization program, the ministry is happy to report that the construction of Lagos Ibadan standard gauge line has reached 92%. We will be needing adequate funds to be provided in the 2021 budget proposal to facilitate the completion of the project. Yeah, ministry is a very important ministry, although all ministries are important. But given the quantum of money being allocated to the Ministry of Transportation in the budget, Meanwhile, the Permanent Secretary, State House, Tijani Omar, has appealed to the Senate Committee on Federal Character to approve the construction of the presidential wing of the State House Clinic, which he says is of strategic importance to the nation. It is considered a legacy project for us. Legacy because we want to leave something down so that, you know, uh, those who come after us would enjoy it. 2021 budget scrutiny at the National Assembly continues. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. And the federal government is set to introduce a robust agricultural mechanization program aimed at boosting national food production. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Hamid, says the $1.2 billion that will finance the prog program is captured in the 2021 budget. Musa Babalu has details. Nigeria is ranked among the few countries with the least mechanized farming activities below the United Nations standard. Investigation shows that the operational tractors in the country are not up to 100,000. Tractors we require in this country to make our land very functional in terms of number is over a million tractors. But presently, I can tell you, hardly we can have serviceable tractors in this country that are up to 100,000. To close the gap, the federal government is introducing mechanization support projects in partnership with the Brazilian government. Brazil, under its more food program, is providing Nigeria with $1.2 billion. Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed appears before the House Committee on Finance to defend the proposed loan. It's meant for government to borrow, to on lend to uh, tractor assembly plants, to on lend to businesses that will set up processing centers at uh, senatorial level as well as at local government level. It is designed to enable Nigeria acquire 10,000 units of tractors and 50,000 units of assorted implements and equipment for assembly in Nigeria. The Nigerian government and the Brazilian government agree that it's in kind loan, not cash. The in kind equipment is leased out to the service center operator who participates in deciding what type and size of equipment is fit for the services in his or her local government or their local government. 
100,000 young entrepreneurs are to benefit from the project directly and 5 million indirectly. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. And to the digital economy, the Executive Vice Chairman Nigerian Communications Commission, Professor Mark Dambata, says that digital age offers greater revenue earning potential to the current economic headwinds in Nigeria. Dambata noted this in a paper delivered by him at a two-day hybrid annual directors conference. He emphasized federal government's position on economic diversification and stressed that the fourth industrial revolution, if properly enhanced and exploited, can unleash a new phase of massive revenue generation and wealth creation for Nigeria in the post-oil era. The IOD Nigeria Annual Directors Conference is the Institute's flagship event, attended by captains of industry and directors in both private and public sectors of the Nigerian economy. To education, Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TED Fund, has initiated a paradigm shift in its needs assessment intervention and monitoring of projects in the nation's tertiary institutions. The agency equally announced that e-learning will be given priority in all its interventions across Nigeria. Chairman, Board of Trustees, TED Fund, stated this during an inspection of TED Fund sponsored projects at the University of Port Harcourt, Rivers State. Chidebir Onya reports. Chairman Board of Trustees, State Fund, Alaji Kashim Ibrahim Imam, during the inspection tour of some sponsored debt fund projects at the University of Portaco, disclosed the readiness of debt fund to boost virtual learning in view of the present realities of COVID-19. Uh, going forward, we are going to consult and consult widely. We, we also will take practical measures to ensure that we are getting value for money. The Board of Trustees of Ted Fund is very keen on facilitating e-learning across the various university um, campuses. Vice Chancellor, University of Port Harcourt, while appreciating Ted Fund for its numerous projects, described it as the hope of tertiary institutions in the country. As our projects are expanding, so our electricity needs also are expanding. The current generators we have cannot carry the DC, but the board chairman has said that there is something more creative they are trying to do, uh, create an opportunity for power generation capacity for each university. An interactive section earlier held we are salient issues that would improve the academic performance of the institution we are discussed. From the University of Port Harcourt, Chidi Ebere Onye, NTA News. To Health Matters, World Radiography Day is celebrated annually on November 8th to commemorate the discovery of X radiation in 1895. The day is also used globally to promote radiography as a career and its vital contribution to healthcare while increasing public awareness on diagnostics, imaging, and radiation therapy. The theme for the 2020 World Radiography Day is elevating patent care with artificial intelligence. Radiographers are essential in elevating Elevating patent care. ECOWAS Parliament has recommended regional parliamentary support for member states to ratify the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. This followed deliberations on the prospects of achieving implementation of the Free Trade Agreement within the context of cross-border threats. On NGFIFS reports that other outcomes of the delocalized meeting of joint committees in Cotonou will be presented to plenary for consideration. Having received information on the viability of the African Continental Free Trade Area, members of Parliament considered the initiative as a needed step to create a continental market for goods and services with free movement of people and capital. In drawing the curtains on the delocalized meeting, Parliament is resolved to promote the diffusion of information on the need to implement the free trade area for intra-Africa trade, better harmonize trade liberalization and achieve continental economic growth. They lamented the failure of countries to observe their obligations under agreements. Example, unilateral closure of border, recognizing free movement of goods as a major plank of integration. Parliament expects member states to fulfill their obligations, conclude national implementation strategies and in place mechanisms to monitor the implementation of the AFCTA that the ECOWAS Parliament, working with all stakeholders, will ensure that the objectives of the ACTA 
are achieved to their fullest. We are aware that it requires our genuine commitment and actions. The meeting also recommends institutionalizing a consultation framework between parliament, civil society, and the private sector to drive the implementation. In Kotonou, Benin Republic, Onengiye Fine Face, NT News. To some security talks now, the Directorate of Defense Media Operations says the air component of Operation Thunderstrike has neutralized several armed bandits attempting to rustle hundreds of cattle in Kaduna State. A statement by DMO Coordinator Major General John Enenche indicates that this was achieved by on November 7, 2020, based on credible intelligence reports. An Nigerian Air Force attack helicopter on armed re reconnaissance mission in the area spotted the bandits with the rustled cattle in an open patch along the east-west axis of the forest. Based on intelligence, the Nigerian Air Force helicopter attacked the target area, leading to the neutralization of several of the bandits. Although U.S. President Donald Trump hasn't conceded defeat, world leaders swiftly congratulated Joe Biden for his victory at the 2020 U.S. presidential election. Justin Bemwini has a compilation of this. World leaders have extended their congratulations to President-elect Joe Biden after he was projected to be the winner of the 2020 presidential election. Many of the leaders have been thrown off course by the unpredictability of President Donald Trump's leadership style, and many of them also have interacted with Biden before as he has a long history of delving into foreign policy as a member of the U.S. Senate from 1973 to 2009 and as vice president from 2009 to 2017. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tweeted in both English and French to say congratulations to Biden and Harris, remarking on the unique relationship between the two countries. Also, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson congratulated his potential future counterpart, particularly Harris, on her historic achievement. Johnson added brief comments saying he looks forward to working closely closely together on shared priorities. In the same vein, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke with pride of Harry's path-breaking success, as Harry's, in addition to being the first woman vice president-elect and first black vice president-elect, will become the first Indian-American vice president-elect. Following Trudeau's example, French President Emmanuel Macron tweeted out a statement in English and French. While Macron's statement was little more than a general congratulations, he did speak of the work that will will lie ahead, saying that the two nations will have to overcome today's challenges. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen was even more prescriptive in our kudos note as he said the European Commission stands ready to intensify cooperation with the new administration and the new Congress to address pressing challenges they face. This is just as the President of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mohamed, also congratulated the President and Vice President-elect as he said the African Union Commission looks forward to a new, stronger U.S. USA-Africa relationship based on mutual respect and shared values of international cooperation. Justin Bemunyi, NTA News. Away from the U.S. presidential election, the Sultan of Sokoto, Mohammed Saad Abubakar III, has admonished Nigerian youths to always embrace dialogue to press on their demands. The Sultan was speaking at the 2020 annual dinner of the Barewa Old Boys Association, Boba, held in Kano. Mohammed Rabi Ali reports. The Barewa Old Boys Association first port of call for the 2020 annual meeting kicked off with a courtesy visit on the Emir of Kano, Aminu Ado Bayaro, where he was intimated on the strides recorded by the association and seek for his royal blessings. Emir of Kano, Aminu Ado Bayaro, says the history of Nigeria cannot be completed without the mention of Barewa College in view of their contributions to nation building. The national president of Barewa College, Dahiri Ibrahim, thanked the Emir for the warm reception accorded them. At the dinner organized to honor heroes of Barewa College who have distinguished themselves in their various fields of endeavor, Sultan Abu Bakr III urged members to sustain the spirit of brotherhood. 
and I want to call on all of us, please continue the discussion. Don't let it uh, stop here. There are so many things to talk about to make this country a much better country for all of us. Some of the recommendations the His Eminence has made, we have noted them, especially in looking forward to see that uh, all youth restlessness is taken care of. The college was set up by the colonial masters in those days, and uh, they set us on the path of uh, honesty, dedication, and service to the nation. And that's what we have con tried to continue to you know, practice. We know tradition and our heritage in Baria College, the mother of all schools, the anchor of Nigerian politics and Nigerian leadership. Muhammad Rabiu. Talking sports now, Liverpool earned a point at Manchester City in a one